In this video, we will learn about the different types of blood vessels. Blood vessels are a component of the circulatory system and are found throughout your entire body. They transport blood and many other molecules to and from different parts of the body. Blood vessels resemble tubes with a wall on the exterior and an empty space in the interior called the lumen. Blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart are called arteries, and the vessels that carry blood back towards the heart are called veins. To help you remember, arteries and away both start with the letter A. Blood starts off in the heart, and then it's pumped away from the heart. The first type of vessels that blood enters is called the arteries. These vessels are large, and since they're receiving blood directly from the powerful pumping heart, the pressure inside the arteries is high. To withstand this great pressure, the arteries need to have a thick and rigid wall. Even though arteries are pretty big, their lumen is pretty small. So arteries don't actually contain that large of a volume of blood. Only about 10 to 15% of your blood is in your arteries at any point in time. As the vessels get further away from the heart, they branch into smaller vessels called arterioles. They're about medium to small size. Arterioles have a key role in regulating blood flow and blood pressure. These vessels contain smooth muscles in their walls that can dilate or constrict the vessel to regulate the pressure and velocity of the blood flow. This is where most of the vascular resistance is found, which means that it becomes much harder for blood to flow through here. This vascular resistance creates the most prominent decrease in blood pressure. The lower blood pressure is important because it prevents the much thinner and fragile capillaries from exploding due to excessive pressure. Next, arterioles then branch into even smaller vessels called capillaries. Capillaries are tiny vessels that are just wide enough for a single blood cell to pass through at a time. And as mentioned before, they have very thin walls. Their walls are composed of only one cell layer. And these thin walls make the exchange of the materials and gases between the bloodstream and the tissues much, much easier. This is also where blood transitions from an oxygenated state to a deoxygenated state in systemic circulation. After blood passes through capillaries, the blood now has low levels of oxygen and needs to return to the heart to get reoxygenated. The capillaries merge into larger venules, then the venules continue to merge until they become large veins that lead blood back to the heart. Veins and venules have thinner walls compared to arteries and arterioles, and their walls are also much more flexible. This is because the blood pressure drops as the blood moves away from the powerful ventricles that pumped it. Since the veins are far away from the heart, the blood pressure in the veins are low, and so they don't need to withstand a great deal of pressure. Because veins are more flexible, they also hold much more blood. About 65 to 70% of your body's blood is found in your veins. Since there's less pressure in the veins, there also needs to be some sort of mechanism to ensure that the blood continues flowing in one direction. And so in the medium and large veins, there are valves that keep the blood flowing in one direction. These valves are especially important in the arms and legs to prevent the backflow of blood due to gravity. Let's take a closer look at how these valves work. This here is a vein, and these are some valves, and the valves are crescent-shaped. Veins are usually found buried between muscles, and when these muscles contract, they squeeze on the vein and push the blood closer towards the heart. But then, gravity will start acting on the blood and pulls the blood back down. The blood in the sections behind the valves will pull down on the flaps of the valves. This causes the flaps to close, thereby stopping the backflow of blood. So now the blood is in this section. Then when the next muscle contractions occurs, the blood forces the next set of valves to open again, 
and the blood is pushed into the next section of the vein. Gravity, again, causes the blood to pull down on the flaps and close the flaps. And then the cycle continues until the blood reaches the heart. Now, time for some questions to test your understanding. True or false? All arteries carry oxygenated blood, and all veins carry deoxygenated blood. Pause here if you need more time to think. The answer is false. In pulmonary circulation, blood travels from the heart to the lungs and then back towards the heart. The blood that leaves the heart is deoxygenated and it travels through the pulmonary arteries to reach the lungs. And when the oxygenated blood returns to the heart, it travels through the pulmonary veins. This is one instance where arteries actually carry deoxygenated blood and veins carry oxygenated blood. The terms artery and veins refer to the direction in which blood is carried and not the type of blood that they carry. Arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Did you get the question right? Comment what you thought down below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want to learn more about this subject, check out this video. And if you want to learn the same thing but in French, check out this video. Thanks for watching. Bye!